as you can see, a really happy bunch of product design people having fun while doing feedback sessions each week. And when I rehearsed the talk earlier to some friends, they were asking afterwards if um, I montaged the whole scenery here or if this, is if, if this is a real screenshot. And I can tell you this is real. And I can tell you it wasn't always like that. And as one philosopher once said, the path to paradise begins in hell. So I'm going to talk a little bit about how it was before. Back in the days, and I think it was two years ago now, we had this really nice meeting with all the design people. Um, so brand design, user experience design, product design, and we were just giving each other an overview each week. But I was really missing some more feedback culture and nitty gritty design feedback culture with my product design colleagues to improve the quality, consistency, and all that stuff. And so we just tried it out and set up the meetings. And the idea was good, but the plan didn't really work out, I can tell you. And when I observe it now in retrospect, I think there are some main points why it didn't work out in the first place. First of all, structure, structure everywhere. My head is sometimes really messy. And so I really enjoy it when during my work, everything falls into place, you know? You have those components and they are used everywhere and everything is consistent. And so I named the whole meeting the Design System Nerd Talk. And let's just name it, I completely killed the fun. As much as I love my colleagues, but they don't love design systems as much as I do. So this was already kind of a bummer, to be honest. But yeah, it got even a bit worse because we were always sitting in front of a beamer or a big television screen. And there was no real collaboration possible. So imagine you're about to receive some feedback on something you worked on, probably for weeks. And then everything is on this big screen, everyone's sitting around you, and then it starts. People pointing onto the screen and saying, okay, can you, the typography, can you put it a bit to the top? And can you probably change the color here a bit? And then you're not just under pressure because you're presenting something and you're about to receiving feedback, but you're also under pressure to master the whole tooling. Oh God. So this is not so easy when you're then in the spotlight of everything. And I think because of that, we started to share our ideas and our work kind of late. And this remembers me always of the time when I was a freelancer and sometimes in rounds of 20 people giving and receiving feedback. And then I had sweaty hands when I was preparing for this meeting beforehand. I tried to make everything as shiny and perfect as possible. So every pixel had to be in the right position. And then I was not really open to receive feedback anymore, but I really just wanted that everyone just put their thumbs up and say, yay, great work. And to be honest, yeah, this didn't really feel good. And I think this is why we skipped it and skipped it, postponed it, find some reasons why we shouldn't attend, and at some point completely dropped it. And I think when you have a healthy culture in your company, this is also totally fine. If something doesn't create any value for you, just leave it. That's totally cool. Anyways, I still get a bit frustrated because I still thought it's a good idea. And as I said, the path to paradise begins in hell and we didn't give up. And we're now talking a little bit more about the paradise part here. And it started with change. We changed and our needs changed in the company and in our team. First of all, we grew as a design team. So even the weekly rounds where we were just having, giving each other an overview of our work and not going into details get even more high level when we grew as a team. So there was no real feedback situation possible. Then we also grew as a company and we switched our working mode. Back in the days, we were sitting in one huge room with all the designers all around us. And there it was obviously a bit easier to just grab someone who's sitting next to you, talk with them about something. So we switched into the working mode of Streamaligned Teams and every designer was sitting there next to developers, QA, PO, and so on. And 
even though this is really nice to work closer with the development team, we were super afraid to lose connection because at the end, you want to deliver one product to the customers. You want to deliver one user journey, one experience. And then we also switched our tuning to Figma and this made real-time collaboration possible for the first time, which was a game changer for us. And then Corona hit and we went all fully, re all fully remote and we were also being afraid of losing the social connection with each other, which we always had when we were just having fun in our, in our office space. And then we just tried it again and it just worked. Actually, it just worked, I can tell you. And yeah, now I'm going to tell you a little bit how it works for us. Our 10 secrets for a healthy and lovable design critique meeting. Obviously, maybe not everything, everything might work for you. Uh, maybe it's just reassuring you in some things, but this is how it works for us. Let's get into it. The first secret or rule is there are no rules. And I can't stress this enough. I know there are some contrary medium articles out there, always telling you about time box everything and someone's taking notes, someone is getting uh, is, is presenting, someone the, the bunch of people giving you feedback. But I don't think this is how it should be. There are so many rules every day especially when you're working in a tech company. Everything is so much structured. You as a design group should open up and have some space where you can be yourself and where you can try things out, where you can be open, honest with each other. And sometimes, yes, yeah, sometimes you're maybe losing some time in a nitty gritty detail, but overall you feel comfortable around each other when you probably have less rules than before. The second one is train your feedback skills. And I'm emphasizing here on the word skills because nobody on earth is born with a good ability to give and receive feedback. So pay attention to this, pay attention to your own feedback skills. And luckily in our company, uh, the people department is offering feedback sessions where you can train this uh, ability, but it's so important. And there are two things uh, which helped me the most. Obviously you can hold a complete talk uh, just about feedback, but there are two things uh, which helped me the most. First of all, ask questions. I'm most of the time a pretty direct and blunt person. And I totally can understand that people feel easily offended by what I say. So I started to ask questions and be curious about the work of my uh, colleague presenting to me. And this starts a dialogue and, and this is way easier for them to explain what they did and for me to understand what we what, what they did. And also for people who don't like to share so much, I think it's way easier for them to ask questions instead of telling them, ah, I don't like this button because of this reason so much. And the second thing I learned is that you don't need to act on feedback. Feedback is always an individual perspective and it is not the truth it's just one of multiple truths so it helped me really in feeling less offended by feedback when it was too negative and so it's a bit easier to receive it and probably just let it go at some point the third part is put your ego aside and I really know it's easy to get sometimes a little bit cocky about a really awesome design you just did. And every user loves it. And it's totally awesome. And be self-confident, of course. But as soon as you're going to a meeting where you're about to get feedback for your designs, make sure that you put your ego aside and be vulnerable and be open for getting some input. Otherwise you have this ego all around you and you create a barrier and this barrier keeps away, keeps you away from growth and keeps you away from, from improving yourself and your work. The fourth secret is it's always a brainstorm. And yes, this is also going totally into contrary to a lot of medium articles out there, but it's always a brainstorm because you're always putting your head into it and thinking about the problem you might want to solve or 
you just solved and you're presenting to your colleagues, but I want them to be open also about new perspectives. Let's not fall for the bias that we just should stick to this solution because we went down the road for some time. Let's make sure that we create a space where, where everyone can give new ideas at any point in time. And then number five, create a safe space for your team and have some fun. And yes, also creating a safe space for your team is already one talk for itself. Nevertheless, we should remind ourselves always and always that this is the first part to opening up. So make sure that you pay attention to all that stuff. And I think one part of it is creating some fun moments and wasting some time together. Because when you team up and have some fun together, it's way easier to, to deliver something new and outstanding because you're doing it together. And also when you have a safe space for your product design team and you team up with them, with your peers, it's always easier also to go to developers and product owners, which you should share your work with as well, obviously. But when you know you already have your bag of the product designers, it gets sometimes a bit easier in no negotiation. And this is actually one of our <laughs> one of our situations we had during a feedback session. One of our colleagues was uh, showing us some user journey and what things might happen. And at some point, we were like, "Wait, this looks like a Michelin mascot." Okay, uh, and then we were just googling, put everything together, and named the thing king pool it's super ridiculous and i can tell you obviously it helps a little bit when you're having the same humor here nevertheless this costs us a few minutes but i think it's an invest in the future when you have fun with each other because you start to trust each other a bit more and you open up a bit more so i think it's super important and then keep it small and this sounds obviously obvious but I think we often don't pay enough attention to it. And I have one chart for this, and I think it's super easy to grasp. So there are three people and there are just three lines of connection between them possible. But as soon as you have five people, you already have 10 lines. And as soon as you have eight people, there are 28 lines. Doesn't this look complicated to you? I mean, it's, already it's it's so hard already with the few people to understand each other and and build some good situation but eight people seem way too much when i look at this chart so currently we're i think seven or eight product designers in in our group and this is it starts to be too much so we have to split up at some point so i think four to five people is the perfect amount the seventh point is solve problems together. And I'm emphasizing here on the word together because this creates so much input at a very short point in time. I mean, we usually grab a coffee before we start our meeting and just loosen up and just have some fun with each other and just talking about our last week. And at some point, one of my colleagues is dropping a URL and we're all jumping into the Figma file. And then, they state the problem or at which point of the journey they are and what they want to have feedback for. And we just start talking and thinking out loud about the stuff that they show. But we are also just grabbing a frame, duplicating it and immediately trying out things. Sometimes 10 minutes, sometimes we're also not talking a lot. Meanwhile, while we're trying to solve the problem together or get a, also a new perspective onto the problem. And at the end, it starts to become our thing because we all participated into the whole design perspective here. And so it's really important that you have this moment of solving something together and trying things out together while giving each other feedback. The eighth point is respect different needs and personalities. And I really love it how much we start in a lot of companies to pay attention on higher higher for diversity. But we also have to remind ourselves that this is a day-by-day -day work. We have to make sure that everyone feels integrated every day. So I just grabbed here an example. For example, the introverts. 
are during a conversation mostly listening and thinking. And it's totally fine. Should we pressure them to present something when they don't feel comfortable yet? Even if they are just listening, they learn something, they see how we act with each other. And maybe the extra words of a team should be the leading example in the first place to create an atmosphere and to show everyone that it's totally fine to present something that you created. And maybe at some point, the 10% talking start by itself. So everyone in our company can share, but nobody has to. And as you can see here in the screenshot, my colleague Teresa, who is definitely an introvert, she reserved the slot for the next week's feedback sync already immediate minutes immediately after our meeting, which was super buzzing and full with topics. So she didn't have any space to bring hers. And this made me so happy that we accompli accomplished it that everyone wants to share. The ninth part is share early and share often. And yes, we focus all the time on any stage. Just bring what you want at any point, don't over prepare it. And I think um, Sarah Gibbons here phrased it really perfectly and I just want to read it out. Multiple designers who work on different parts of a big project can pick up possible inconsistencies across the overall user experience when they all participate in early critiques of each other's draft designs. Exactly like this, especially draft designs. And Last but not least, name things properly. You could now say potato, potato, but come on, how much time spent in the last 12 months thinking about how what words should you write on a button? You, we all know this is important and we should, we should pay attention because the perception can be totally different when you're, when you're not using the right words. So why shouldn't we pay attention by naming our meetings properly? And, Researching the word critique sounds in the first place not that bad. The art of criticism, why not? But in the example it already states, the politician received a lot of public criticism for his controversial stance on the issue. Well, that doesn't sound positive at all. Should, should we really name something of our, of our meetings like that? And when you go deeper, the synonyms, censure, I'm not sure. Maybe it's just because I'm German and, and I don't really understand every word in the perfect way, but it doesn't sound positive. So we changed our names. Our feedback meeting each week is now the Design Sync, and our private uh, Slack channel is the Product Designers Lounge. And I know it sounds a bit silly, but so far it works. And when you then pay attention to all those 10 things and secrets here, maybe you will end up with a screenshot you can proudly present. My colleague Rudy was happily writing about our meeting uh, we had, as always, a super nice session. And my colleague Teresa was proposing to extend the meeting by half an hour. And isn't that the best feedback you can get? And actually, yes, we did. We extended our meeting by half an hour and everyone is happy about it. Remember, back in the days, we were skipping the meeting because everyone hated it. And now we want to have more of it. That's just awesome. I love it. And beside of the extension of the meeting, because we like it so much, also the overall consistency of our designs improved and the quality of our system. It's Everything is falling into place now. Everything that was too messy for me before is automatically happening now because we see the reason for it. And so I want to leave you now with something. And um, yeah, don't take work life too seriously. Add some doggo pictures, as you can see here in the background. Have fun, kill some rules, and enjoy. Thank you so much. Have a great day.